I want to welcome you to Worship Wednesday. It's great to have you joining me today. And uh, right away, you're probably wondering, hey, what's going on, Steve? Where's Katie? Where's the keyboard? Uh, you're out in the deck. What's going on? And uh, hey, I want you to know uh, everything's good with Katie. Uh, Lord willing, she'll be joining us next week. I, I just thought today I'd do something different and uh, share a little bit of something that's been on my heart, something I've been thinking about and praying about and, and searching God's word about. And I thought it would be good just to take a pause today and uh, reflect on, uh, on something. Um, you know, I don't know about you, but I've noticed uh, probably a key word over the last three months that's uh, been used an awful lot is the word essential. And a lot of us, I think, have been slowed down and uh, our lives have changed and uh, we've been restricted in many ways to things that are essential. Uh, lots of talk about what is essential, essential services, essential businesses and that. And uh, a lot of you know, Deb and I live out in the country and uh, we've got a, a, a few animals here on the property. We've got some cattle um, that we put on pasture for the summer and uh, there's, uh, there's some horses around, a few horses around. You might see one snorting around here, who knows. Um, but really there's two things that are essential for animals, at least the animals we have here. And those two things are, number one, they need grass um, and they need water. It works out kind of nice for me because I don't have to cut as much grass because I let the animals uh, take care of most of that around here. Um, but I got to make sure that they do have access to grass and that they've got, they've got fresh water. And those are the two key essentials that animals need. And uh, I've just been feeling that we as God's people are, are in a bit of a state right now that concerns me because there's an aspect of something that I believe is essential for us that we're being limited by. Um, and some of that might be our own limitations and some of that is the circumstances that we find ourselves in. And I'd like to suggest to you that one of those essentials that's really important for us as God's people is the essential of singing. Now you may say, hey Steve, wait a second. I know you and Pastor Jordan, you guys work with singers all the time, and I'm just not a singer. Um, I, I never grew up singing very much. I'm new to the church, or I've been around the church a long time, but I just don't enjoy singing. Um, it's fine for you guys to do it, but what's this really got to do with me? <clears throat> and I hope that for all of us, as we consider a few things today, as we look at God's Word, that uh, we'll come to an understanding of, of why, why we actually sing, why, why we do it in the church. And, and even more than that, as I'm going to suggest to you today, uh, it is something that is essential. And uh, so, you know, some of you might say, well, yeah, eh, I like to listen. I don't really, really need to sing, do I? Well, here's the, here's the deal. You know, we're in a mode right now where it could be very easy just to become passive, just to be listeners. And as we look at God's word, we're going to see that singing is is not a spectator support. It's something that we need to do as worshipers, that it's active for us. And, you know, I'm, I am thankful, don't get me wrong, I'm thankful that we're able to meet online, uh, that God has is, is blessing the efforts together, that as a team, we're seeking to make sure that God's word is being preached, to make sure that there is a worship environment coming into your homes every every week uh, on Sundays obviously on music Mondays worship Wednesdays that's what we're seeking to try to do is to make sure that there's opportunity for us to continue in worship together studying God's Word praying together singing songs to him but we have a little bit of a, a danger right now that we could just be watching and we could just be listening and slipping into a passive mode rather than an active engaging mode and I, I hope that um, that today as we look at some things you'll see uh, why singing is so important you know some people have said to me over the years you know Steve why do we spend so much energy and time and even resources on singing in the church isn't isn't preaching just good enough and preaching and prayer like aren't those just really the essentials and uh, I really do believe that uh, worship through singing is another one of those key essentials that God has um, has asked us to to be part of as the church so uh, in fact I think there's four reasons and I'm just going to quickly look at them this afternoon with you and I hope that you'll find this encouraging um, and, and edifying and building you up and maybe even challenging but there's four reasons why I believe that singing is essential for God's people and the first uh, reason is it's what God's people do I mean, it's what they've done in the past, it's, it's what we're supposed to do today, and it's what we're going to be doing in the future, and I'm going to come back to that. The second reason why I believe uh, singing is essential is it's something that God does. And that may surprise you, but we're going to look at some scripture that, 
that helps us understand that singing is an activity, is, is something that God uh, believes is really important. He does it himself. Uh, certainly we look through God's word and uh, I'll highlight a couple passages today where we actually see uh, it's a command for us as God's people to sing, to use our voices to praise him and to testify him. And the last thing I'll just quickly touch on today is it's, it's part of our calling. It's, it, it gives us purpose. It grounds us in the, uh, to be the kind of people that God wants us to be. It's, it's really uh, a key component to who we are. So we're going to look quickly at those uh, four things. So let's start with the first one in terms of it's something that God's people do. And uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but the first recorded song in Scripture we actually find in Exodus chapter 15. So fairly early in, in, the, in, in, the, in the narrative of God's overall gospel where he uh, sets aside a people and calls them out of slavery in Egypt and starts a redeeming work for them. And part of that is rescuing them from, uh, from the Egyptians, from this body bondage of slavery and uh, many of you know the story Moses is leading them out of Egypt and uh, of course there's second thoughts in Egypt about uh, letting the Israelites go and the Israel the Egyptian army pursues the Israelites and uh, we pick up the story in Exodus chapter 15 where God does this amazing thing that he rescues the people of uh, of Israel by allowing them to cross through the Red Sea on dry land through a miraculous display of God's power that is led through Moses. The people are saved by crossing the sea. And then, of course, as the people get across, then God closes the waters and the Egyptians are trapped in the water and can't, can't get at them. And uh, there's this incredible victory for God's people. And then we have the song, the very first recorded song. Uh, in scriptures and uh, Moses leads the people it says it's, it's that Moses sings and the people join together with him and in Exodus 15 the song starts like this I will sing to the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horse and the rider he has thrown into the sea the Lord is my strength and my song and he has become my salvation this is my God and I will praise him my father's God and I will exalt him. You see, we all already start to see uh, the connection of singing to the gospel story, the heart of God of salvation, as God does something for his people to save them, to rescue them, and God's people respond with song. And it's kind of cool in that chapter, I think it's kind of cool anyways, that we actually have the first record of, uh, of, the, of the very first women's chorus. Uh, in verse 20, the story continues that Miriam, the prophetess, the uh, sister of Aaron, takes up a tambourine in her hand and all the women follow her and continue with singing with their tambourines and dancing. Pretty cool. So we see a very early account of where singing, uh, of course, earlier accounts talk about praising the Lord, but this specifically tells us that God's people were singing, singing to him about what he had done, exalting him, for he is uh, their God. Of course, the next thing that hits me is the, the, the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms uh, was was the God's people. It was their hymn book. It was it was what they used. Um, of course, we we know by that time that uh, there was some more formalized worship going on, and uh, there were people that were set aside that were skillful on instruments, skillful singing, and they were set aside to lead God's people, not just to be the singers, but to lead God's people in. Uh, in singing. And here we have the book of Psalms. And in fact, it's interesting uh, that the book of Psalms in the Bible is the longest book in the Bible. Uh, so here we have something that God has set aside in his word that is specifically about singing worship used for God. That's an amazing thing. It's what God's people do. But it's also what we're going to be doing in the, in the future. Um, uh, I was reflecting recently on a couple passages in Revelation that I think are very relevant to our, our setting right now where we have so much conflict in the world. And of course, conflict isn't a new thing. It's, it's a sin problem. And uh, we've, had, we've had the problem of sin for, uh, since the fall of man, um, between brothers even in the early accounts, of course. And uh, so we see tension uh, throughout human history, and we've got lots of tension between people groups right now, between races, but we have a glorious picture of something happening in the future. And that picture involves people of every tribe, tongue, and language coming together in unity 
and singing. Listen to this. Revelations 5 verse 10 says this. And they sang a new song saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain and by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe, language, and people, and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God. And they shall reign over the earth pretty cool, eh? I, I, you know, I don't know what language they're going to be singing in. I don't know what the tune's going to be like, what the harmonies are going to be like, uh, but I do know this. It's going to be uh, everyone coming together, every tribe, tongue, language, people coming together in unity as God's people, raising a song of praise to him. Revelations 15, uh, 3 to 5, another one, and it references the song of Moses and the song, uh, the song of the Lamb. It says this, and, and they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and amazing are your deeds, O God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the nations. Who will not fear, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All the nations will come and worship you for your righteous acts have been revealed. Isn't that cool? Uh, we are going to be spending eternity uh, joining uh, with the heavenly hosts, joining with the nations, uh, the redeemed people of God from every tribe, tongue, and nation, coming together in unity and in one voice, singing together to our great God and King. Essential singing. It's what God's people do what they've done in the past and what we're going to do in the future. But let me go on to the second point. God is a singer. I know that's kind of crazy um, to, to think about that, but, you know, in Zephaniah 3.17, um, we read this. The Lord your God is in your midst and the mighty one who will save you. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. Isn't that pretty crazy? I mean, when I think about it, uh, why would God rejoice over me? Why would God sing over me? I don't get it. I don't understand it. But we see here clearly in God's word that God sings over his people with joy, with celebration. It's talking about loud singing and gladness. This is something that our God does. And he does it in relationship to us. His love and joy for us results in jubilant song. God sings. Another kind of uh, really impactful thing, at least for me, is singing was one of the last things that Jesus did with his disciples before he went to the cross. Of course, we know as they gathered in the upper room and uh, Jesus had that last supper and instituted um, that opportunity of to continue to commune with him in a way of, of coming together uh, around the bread and the wine and remembering his sacrifice, his broken body and his blood that would be spilled. It says that before they left, before they went out, they sang a hymn together. Jesus singing with his people. Isn't that amazing? God is a singer. God, God um, loves to sing over his people and with, with his singer. It, uh, with his people. It, singing uniquely unifies us with God and his heavenly host and and it's a beautiful thing how passionate God is about us and that he chooses to display his passionate love for us with singing, singing that's joyful, singing that's celebrative. I think that's so cool. Hey, um, you know, it's really important, I think, also when, we, when I ask the question, is singing really essential? Of course, all that we do needs to be grounded in God's word. And these things I'm, that we've already talked about, we see clearly in God's word. But, but even more than just seeing examples of them in God's word, uh, as we come into God's word, we also see it's a command. Um, and it's a New Testament command. When we look through the Bible, there's actually four, over 400, I believe, references to singing in the Bible. Uh, and then there's 50 very clear commands uh, in regards to singing. Uh, and I just want to look at two particular uh, New Testament commands when it comes to singing. And they're found in Colossians and Ephesians, and they're similar. Um, and uh, so twice we see in the New Testament this, this command, and, and it's a command to sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to each other, to one another. There's a gathering component. L listen to this, Colossians 3.16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, 
singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Did you see the one another? Did you hear the one another in there? Ephesians 5, 18 to 20 has the same thing. We pick it up at the end of verse 18 where it says, Be filled with the Spirit. And then it says, Speaking to one another, addressing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, embedded in these commands is to sing, but not just to sing by yourselves. We need to be singing with one another in a gathering context. And, oh, don't you just long for that? Don't you just, uh, I, I hope you're crying out to the Lord and asking that he would intervene and allow us to come together, uh, to be able to worship together with one another. I so miss our, our fellowship, our, our community together. I miss our worship together. And I'm praying that God will, will open that possibility for us sooner than later. Hey, the last thing I just want to touch on is, uh, is something that I was reminded about um, as Pastor Rick uh, taught us on, in, on Sunday morning in God's Word. And what, what an impactful sermon, amen? And uh, as we were considering uh, who we are, uh, called, to, called out to be God's people, um, a chosen race, a royal priesthood, it says, in 1 Peter chapter 2. It says something uh, that just struck me um, as we were studying on, on Sunday. Uh, in verse 9, it jumps out that our calling, it says we're chosen to be. There's a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of God's own possession, right? That's who we are to be. And then it gives us a purpose, and it says this, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You see, when we consider what God has done for us, calling us out of darkness into his glorious light, that's, that's intended to, to cause us to put on display his greatness, to proclaim his excellencies. And one of the key ways that we do that is through testimony and through testimony through song. That we, as God's people, are a singing people. That we give testimony in word and, uh, and through lyric and music in such a way that we proclaim the greatness of the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Again, another psalm that reminds us of our calling. So, you know what, I mentioned earlier that, hey, we're still going to sing today. And uh, I, I did want to share these things from my heart. Um, but let me just close uh, with a couple things. First of all, just again, uh, something to encourage us from God's word. Psalm 96 says this, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory, his glory amongst the nations, his marvelous deeds amongst all the people. Do you feel the heartbeat of God, the heartbeat of what he wants us to be and to do, to be his people, but then to be active as his people in proclamation. And a particular kind of proclamation that's included is to sing, to sing. Calvary, we need to sing. So listen, if, if you're by yourself in the car, sing to the Lord. When you are together with your family, sing to the Lord. Sunday mornings, you know, Jordan and I have been saying, get off your couches, uh, get out of bed. Don't just be spectators. Don't just be watching and listening. Engage your hearts and minds and your voice. Sing. And let's pray together that we would be able to come together and be active in the call that we've had uh, from, the, from the New Testament to do this with one another to do it with one another. And so, you know what, I said we would sing, uh, so let's do this. Um, I've asked Jordan just to throw in that little snippet uh, of a song, a psalm of praise that uh, the choir taught you a couple of weeks ago. It's called Sing Praise. So here and now, if you're not used to singing on Worship Wednesdays or Music Mondays or in our virtual services on Sundays, today is the day to use your voice. Sing praise to him. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, put it down and open your heart and your mind and your voice to do what God has called to do because singing is essential. Thanks for joining me today. Let's sing. Sing praise to Him. Sing all your
Sing on your 